There are some major features for Star Citizen that Cloud Imperium are working on over the next few quarters that are so important to making Star Citizen into an actual, tangible MMO game. And I wanted to highlight some of the most important features that have been mentioned on the roadmap in monthly reports and we know that are getting work over the next year. Let's start with some of the features that we know more likely when they're actually going to be in our hands. So, with Alpha 3.15 or the Q3 2020 patch, we are planned to be getting medical gameplay, so hospitals, third-party healing, healing tools, this is steps towards player mortality, risk and reward, otherwise known as death of a spaceman, and I'm hoping at this time or soon afterwards we'll get a down state as well for players, so you can be knocked down rather than killed. That would be absolutely fantastic. That's that's huge. There is local inventory here as well, meaning items need to be proximate to you to be moved between ship, your character, or a landing zone. You can only carry a certain amount. It's going to change the way we play because we're going to be bringing the gear that we want with us. But um, we also have to store some of it on our ship and change armor and change weapons and stuff. And we'll see greater sort of cargo reworks and overhauls a little bit later. Something that is mega important for me to um, here as well is loot. Boxes, crates, and rare spawns at locations for lootable items. Give me loot. And for 3.16, is the end of the year patch. Um, this plans to have salvage tier zero and the tools to do salvage. So it's hand salvaging only, as far as we're aware at this stage, hull stripping in fact. So this is going to be the ability to um, strip the surface layer of our hull off with your little hand tool, um, and then uh, also use that potentially to repair ships as well, so holes in ships, I suppose. But it's been so hyped and wanted for so long, Salvage, that any mechanics they're going to be putting in are desperately wanted, and the whole mechanic will get fleshed out quite a lot over the next few patches after that. A more minor mechanic is hacking what we're expecting in this patch as well. And this is actually going to add quite a lot of interest to missions and how we interact with the game. It's going to be used to access systems and areas that have previously been closed. The hacking process will be represented via a mini game on your HUD. Alpha 3.17 is the first patch of 2022, coming at the end of Q1 in that year. And this has something that I've been waiting for for a long time. Homesteads and persistent hangars. So homesteads are new outposts and points of interest, town locations basically on planets and moons. They potentially might have some customization for player habs or rooms at them too, but they are going to have loads of NPCs around, they're going to have shops, that sort of stuff. Um, much more interesting little locations. Persistent hangars, though, are going to allow players to have their own hangar at landing zones and store items there and customize those hangars. This is also going to start to bring changes to the cargo gameplay loop, allowing players to pack their um, cargo grids manually themselves. But we're expecting quite a lot from cargo over the next few quarters as well. I'd love to see the um, sort of like data as cargo gameplay loop so you can have things like the Mercury Star Runner actually using its computers there things like that and that could even be connected to the hacking gameplay beyond those features though mentioned in the release roadmap there is a load of other features that might turn up in the next few patches and are receiving work according to the progress tracker so let's start with probably the most important game persistence and server meshing proprietary server meshing and persistent technology that's going to allow star citizen to scale up its shared universe across game servers eventually this technology will allow thousands of players to coexist in the verse once the first version of this is implemented the number of servers and players will increase over successive versions persistent updates could potentially be in game by the end of this year with static server meshing landing sometime in 2022 most likely but persistence um, in forms of star citizens gameplay would allow you to have um, sort of locational data saved for individual ships or items that you deposited there so you could hide a cache of weapons and come back for it later and you could have a player base somewhere because it would save the data of where you put that base. It is a prerequisite of server meshing as well, but it's all sort of bundled into the same set of tasks. The Gen 12 renderer and Vulcan integration, I suppose, as well, is going to make Star Citizen much more scalable and resource efficient on PC hardware. Currently, um, this looks to complete its work by the end of September, or at least its current work. So I'm hoping that the Gen 12 renderer stuff is integrated by the end of this year. I think that would be fantastic for Star Citizen and it will be working on a lot a larger range of PCs and hopefully be a bit more stable and have higher frame rates. The physical damage and physicalized components as a sort of, I suppose, a bundle of features is probably one of the most important things for Star Citizen after serve meshing. This is um, going to allow Star Citizen's balance and sort of a combat model to come together. 
each component being individually targetable and damageable, removable, and ships will be disabled based on taking damage to components and sort of like the um, components not being able to communicate with each other because like a relay is damaged or whatever. So your ship, if it can't get power, well, it's not going to be doing much. This allows for boarding, damage control, salvage, repair, even bounty hunting, and actually more realistic balance, and a lot of other stuff as well. It is so important to Star Citizen to have physical components in game, and they can then push towards final balance for the game. I mean, it's not going to be final until the game's finalized, but it will be a lot more appropriate. New star systems, pyro, nix, and jump points. This is something that has been wanted for so, so long. Most of the work is listed to be roughly completed by Q1, Q2, 2022, but it represents the game evolving into Alpha 4.0 when combined with server meshing anyway. I'm hoping that we see this in-game, so literally pyro, nicks, and jump points, as well as server meshing, at least static server meshing, in Q2, more likely Q3 of next year. We know there are a load of AI updates being worked on. Animals like the Boreal Stalker or the Microtech Yeti, um, the Space Whales, Pyro Crabs, but there's also AI modules having turrets controlled by computer server blades and NPCs as crew, but that's quite a bit further out, probably NPCs as crew. But having NPCs as part of missions and as wingmen and as defenders or buddies on the ground and actually being much more part of a mission, well, that's something that might come a lot sooner and is very much being worked on. I think we can reasonably expect to see lots of expanded gameplay loops and expanded missions. So things like Bounty Hunting version 2, um, allowing for uh, a lot more sort of uh, Bounty Hunter missions, a lot more interaction with that um, gameplay loop. Uh, but Comoray missions, hacking, infiltration, ground assaults, any of the new sort of features they add to the game, they'll want to make missions in for. So we'll see search and rescue in the not too distant future because of the medical gameplay that started to come online, things like that. But it's important that we have these missions available to us because it gives us things to do in the game but also a lot of these gameplay loops need to be independent of taking a specific mission like mining that's a lot of gameplay but no missions associated with it at the moment actually we need mining missions cargo lots of um cargo gameplay and yeah we actually do have some cargo missions taking smaller boxes but this will also expand out to taking large freighters worth of cargo to places um, but we also want that cargo gameplay that we can do entirely by ourselves without a mission. We go, actually, I want to do some trading from here to here. And I see that happening with a load of other missions, even salvage, even repair, all of that. There is a cargo refactor as well that I sort of mentioned earlier. This is going to allow both found and purchased cargo to be picked up, moved around, and placed into the cargo grid of a ship. This is also going to be important for looting, piracy, and missions, not just trade and management, being able to move Lots of cargo containers between ships, not just the um, current small cargo containers or, or small boxes, I suppose, as we know them as. They're also talking about the ability to sell components and other items more freely soon too. The progress tracker suggests that the start of this expanded selling could even be by the end of the year. Cloud Imperium is also working on the dynamic universe simulation, Quanta, the dynamic economy. Now, this is probably the third in my list of most important things to get into the game as soon as possible and sort of like core to Star Citizen after server meshing and physical components. So this will tie missions, encounters, and the prices of goods, NPC and player actions all together and have appropriate content being physicalized and activated based on that data. Prices are going to be driven by supply, demand and manufacture. Pirates will be attacking profitable, low risk, well, low risk for them, uh, trade routes. And um, the sort of amount of security in an area is going to be directly related to the zone they're in and they'll be fighting off the pirates. And if you don't have any iron to produce a particular uh, commodity or good in an area, well, they're not going to be able to make those uh, shield generators that require that particular item. Once the dynamic universe sim is done and integrated appropriately with server meshing, that's the sort of time that the game becomes much more of an MMO. It becomes much more of a, well, actually, I can see what you're doing with the economy. There's a lot going on now and should be hugely automated. Now, there's still going to be events and things that Cloud Imperium can trigger manually if they want. And they're still having their control over the economy. It's not, in uh, it's not a player-led economy. It's player-influenced because there's going to be loads of NPCs, which also consume. But um, very, very exciting stuff here. 
There's new planet tech and points of interest that they're getting work as well. New derelicts have been a focus recently. These will help flesh out the game for lootables, salvageables, and general exploration. But we can expect to see a load of new uh, biomes and planets and uh, points of interest, lots of other stuff to explore, find, and get involved with. As I get asked questions about it all the time as well, uh, procedural generation tech for creating rivers and roads is being worked on so that artists can place them uh, across planets, across large sections of planets. So work for that is currently pegged to be completed by the end of March 2022. We'll have to see what sort of implementation we get in game around that time. A few other things, we can expect more um, dynamic event missions. The Nine Tails lockdown isn't for a limited time like Xenothreat, it's actually an on and off erratic sort of um, thing that will play out throughout the 3.14 branch of the game, but also well beyond that. So you know, it's a plan to keep on going. And I think that we can expect to see a lot more mission types like this, and also some one-offs like Xenothreat. Or maybe they're changing Xenothreat so it is just a manually, um, very occasional, quarterly, happens once a quarter sort of thing. Like I'd, I'd be up for that, but it's much more likely that a load of these events will be tied to the dynamic universe, and basically will activate automatically when certain conditions are met. There are various tasks that are rolled into the greater player experience that Cloud Imperium are working on. This includes things like signposting, hints, in-game tutorials, um, economics, stuff like that. It's actually pretty important to get new players into the game easily. A new star map and mini-map are being worked on too. For me, that's long overdue, but I was thinking th about it and I hope they might show that at CitizenCon. But anything where we can save locational data, m uh, share that locational data, travel to locations that we've previously saved, that would be pretty sweet. Boom! That's it for today's video, but what do you think? I've probably missed out a couple of features that you certainly consider um, to be uh, super important that will be coming out in the next year or so, um, and if so, what features have you missed? What are yours? What are your super important features? I did omit some gameplay loops and ships and lots of stuff that is more tentatively well, we don't, don't even know if they're working on it. There's a huge amount of unannounced stuff, and there's going to be a huge amount shared at CitizenCon as well. So, obviously, we can start talking more about that once we know more. But what features are you looking forward to the most? Do you think a load of these are going to get pushed beyond 2022 and into 2023? And what else would you love to see appear on the list? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Mummy, I'm going to play Star Citizen when I get home. Well, little Timmy, you can't because hackers stole our house. This is a story I hear only too often. It was just one day before these two were going to get NordVPN. Now they have to live on the streets. Don't let that be you. Get NordVPN in the links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For August, we are giving away a Mercury Star Runner, the fantastic multi-crew hauler data mission runner, allowing you to do a little bit of everything the Star Citizen has to offer. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details in the links below. If you'd like to further support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. The join button down below, you'll get some exclusive videos and content each month and it really does help us keep going. There is also the new thanks button under my videos for another way of throwing money at us. Both me and Zin appreciate all the support for the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the verse.